It feels good to be me. Love Kid Rock, folks. Hey, boy, you're breaking the checkpoint, man. Where's your pass? Show me your pass. You can't go past the hey, checkpoint. A, uh, of me. What? A picture of what? She wants me to take a picture of her looking like the farmer, sexy farmer girl. Let's see, baby. We can't see your face. Yeah, Beautiful, you know, baby. You know Man, don't. He's trying to put the basketball on my charcoal chimney. That don't go in the charcoal chimney, boy. Hey, give me that. My kid. All right, baby, he's coming to your side. Get him. Yeah. Just look at our life, uh, daily life here on the balcony of the penthouse suite, my friends. Got a beautiful Filipino wife, number one. Beautiful baby. This dude just chilling. Come here. Keeps this woman right here in shape. Keeps her young, chasing him around all the time. Look, man. Let me messing with that charcoal chimney. Here, play him some cardboard. Ah, no, the lighter's not good either. <laughs> I think my cooking station is just not real good for the baby. The brown guy folks are down there. I, I thought they were checking IDs. But they're not. They're coming around giving you passes. So I, I thought they were stopping people, you know, checking checking their passes. But they're not. They're actually doing a doing a service to everybody. They're going around. Hey, look, you need a pass. Let's get. We'll issue you a pass right now, so everybody's okay. So shout out to my folks at the Brungai. They're not making you come to them. They're coming to us, walking around, taking care of the people. That's what. It sh that's how it should work. So I, at first, I look down there. I, I think, you know, what do you, what do you think? They're doing paperwork. I'm thinking, oh shit, they're checking passes. They're not. They're taking care of the people, issuing passes. Shout out to my friends at the Bronx. I thank you very much. And we were just looking over and got, you know, shouted up to us. Hey, you need a pass? Come down and get your pass. Thank you very much, my friends. Very kind of you. Buddy man, buddy man's down there getting my pass. Thank you very much, buddy man. I gotta go get the chicken and some fish. A little bit of activity, folks. Sunday afternoon, it's beautiful. Need you. Ain't gonna prove to me that you're some kind of macho man. Got the old lady brought out the carrots, folks. My goodness, what a big old booty. Lord have mercy. If you hadn't, if you looking fat, pretty hot, and tempting. Got them childbearing hips going on. My goodness. He's over 40 years old now. Folks, I, mean, I ain't trying to pin my wife out here, but if you wake up to a booty that looks better than that, my, my fucking hat's off to you, my friend. Huh? I bring that egg thing. Nah, nah, I'm gonna cook on the charcoal, baby. I ain't cooking on that liquid shit no more. I'm straight up a charcoal man now. So, what do you want to put? Trying to put my ten the tennis ball up here, man. All right, so we got one piece of pork. Got some noodles, carrots. I'm gonna chop them up. Hey, bring that Bear Grylls knife, baby. Like it's, pan it's pandemonium. That's the way it is every night out here. Got Force G busting a sag. Hey, man, you got a crack problem, dude. Pull your pants up, son. Yeah, pull his pants up. Hold on. Pull your drawers up, boy. Force G just chilling, waiting on. About to might get all my ingredients out here, then I'll go to cooking. All right, so I recycled that charcoal from last night, folks. I'm, I'm telling you, keep recycling the fucking charcoal. There's like nothing left. It's like 100% fucking efficiency. But where they got this charcoal, I don't even know. But I just know that that, that charcoal right there is on time. Pull that bad boy up. I gotta give me a big, big uh, trash can to put all this charcoal in. That's what Dennis said he did. He, he bought him a bunch of charcoal. He bought him a trash can or something, man. I can't remember what you said, but this is definitely what I need. I'm tired of 
digging fucking charcoal out of these bags every night. This ain't working for me. All right, that's enough. But last night, I used a little bit of charcoal. I fucking heated that bastard up. Let me get some paper. Let me get a tune out of this trial bone. Let's go. Let's get it going, folks. Let's get it going. folks this is gonna be like a pork stew be a little pork stew and i'm gonna fry it slash boil it slash butter it up you know what i do i just fucking cook the shit till i like it and then uh in the end i'm gonna throw them noodles up in there and i'm gonna get that to the dog downstairs there's a happy dog right there because it's got a little meat on it but it ain't got no meat on it that's not a happy dog that's a happy dog this thing right here is firing up look at that Ooh, it's about time to dump it. All right, folks, this, this thing's almost done. I'm almost ready to dump it. Just clean my hands up here. She didn't bring me no rags. So I'm gonna use her panties. Now the problem, problem with having a, you know, a beautiful, beautiful wife, her panties ain't big enough to fucking be a dish rag. But that's a good thing, my friends. So what I, I got put the pork over here. I am gonna fix this first, but before I throw anything else in there. Oh shit, let me get my lighters out of here before they explode. And this thing is fired up. I got oil and just got some water right here. Whoo, that was a good bottle of liquor right there. I'm gonna reminisce about that. Yeah, so that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna start out with uh start out with this, a little bit of oil. What's the butter? I'll cook it in butter. Throw the vegetables in with the taters, and then the last thing will be the 
the noodles so they don't get, uh, you know, overcooked. Hell yeah, folks. Life is good. I'm going to tell you right now. You want to show your wife who's boss? When you cooking, you get a pair of her fucking panties, using them as a damn dish rag. You know, wipe your face. Oh, yeah, wipe the sweat off my face. Damn, lovely panties. Fucking like mine's gonna be pissed when she sees I'm using her panties as my rag, but those are, those are a little tired. I gotta get her some new panties anyhow, folks. You know? All right, it's about time to dump this. Let me set this camera up here. Here we go, get my glove on. in there. Alright, solid. all over. What I learned last night though, is if I don't even it out, my, my thing don't sit right. See, I put a little water down there. See, I have these big chunks. I gotta even it out or this thing will do the gangster lean all fucking night. Let's see what I can do. See if that fake Bear Grylls knife is gonna survive charcoal challenge. Oh shit! Back in there. Shit, folks. I mean, that's why I keep some water down there in case that happens. I got a little pile of water, but it looks like it's like the Bear Grylls knife, fake Bear Grylls knife, survived the challenge, saved the day. All right, see what we can get going on. Let's set this motherfucker over in here. Oh yeah. Now that's a lot better tonight. It's a lot better tonight. It's not doing as much of the gasoline as it did last night. And the way I gauge my temp, throw that butter over in there. Let that butter, let that butter get the sizzling. And then come over here with my pork. Once this shit gets hot, folks, it's it's on it's ready to roll. Shooting on the iPhone tonight. I don't even know why. I mean, sometimes you just grab a camera, you go with it. So I hope the audio is okay. The GoPro might not, not have the most beautiful footage, but that damn microphone just works good for me. I try not to melt the fucking lens, because I'm gonna tell you right now, there, it's that's heat coming off of here. And when you put cast iron, like I said last night, you put cast iron over uh, charcoal, that shit gets hot quick. It ain't like cooking on an induction burner. All right, here we go. Look at that, sliding off of there. Ooh, that dude right there. Hell yeah, set that man over there. So we're basically gonna, we're gonna braise, brown, cook. Just get the pork going, folks. We get the pork going, because I want to make sure that shit is done before I add any vegetables to this mix. You're not going to catch no type of uh, shit. I've been drinking too much. I'm throwing butter everywhere. You're not going to catch any type of damn disease if you come to my kitchen, because I cook all my meat well done. I know a lot of people don't. They yak me about it. I don't give a fuck. You go eat your damn medium rare steak, big pimpin'. You get some type of bacteria in there, and you fucking can't shit right for three weeks. Don't say I didn't tell you. Don't eat no goddamn medium rare, rare steak. Cook that motherfucker. That's why humans harness fire. Okay? That's why we got to where we were at, because we did fucking harness fire. And when we cooked, we killed all the fucking bacteria and the viruses, and we were able to, we figured out we can live longer. All right, that, that's probably too much oil, but fuck it. I don't want this shit to burn. I want it to fucking be done. 
I don't want it to sizzle, rizzle, zizzle. Yeah, so if you don't cook your meat properly, you, you know, you're, you're putting yourself at risk and your family at risk. And whoever you're cooking for. And if I was a chef in a fucking restaurant, there, there's no way I, if somebody said, I'm, I'm going to take a uh, extremely rare, just, just put it on there and knock the hair off of it. Nah, motherfucker, you go somewhere else. Because when you, when you can't shit right for three weeks, you're going to come back and blame me? That ain't going to happen, motherfucker. That is not going to happen. Not going to happen in my motherfucking kitchen. All right, let me get my... Let me turn up the temperature. That's how you turn up the temp. Look at that. See them coals getting hot? We turn it up the temp just by putting a little O2, a little oxygen. What is fire? With the fire triangle? I can't remember shit. It's been a long time since I fought fire. But it's, uh, what is it? Heat, oxygen, and fuel? We got all three of them. Look at that. God damn right. Damn. I just had a waft come by my face. Smelled like somebody down there smoking a little weed, my friends. I'm not a weed smoker, but... The smell of it is uh is nice, it's delicious. Give me one more stir. Give me one more stir. Oh my god, folks. This old lady ain't gonna know what the hell hit her tonight, I promise you. And folks, I want you to let me know. Do you like the cooking shows? This is what they call first person view, right? Do you like these first person views or do you like it how I normally do my cooking shows? And you can be honest, you ain't gonna hurt my feelings. And look at there, all that juice, carrots, potatoes, onions, and the juice from the marinade just went in there. But see, I'm cognizant of the fact that I don't want anybody to get sick from my cooking. So basically the pork, that pork's already done. You could eat that pork right now. Promise you, you're not gonna get sick. You're not gonna get the shits for three weeks. It ain't gonna happen. It's already done. And then I add everything else and I can lay back, relax, and not fucking worry about it. You know? What I'm gonna do right now, Lodge 3.2 quart cast iron combo cooker. Throw the fucking lid on that and go ahead and drink me. Some of my cat and coke, my friends. Listen to a, a long night in patio. That's my own video that I listened to great music from that Filipino band. But when I was in Patia last week, they were not there, unfortunately. I don't know where they were. Maybe it was an off night. But it's a different Filipino band. It's not the same band. I got to clarify that shit. But it won't be any time soon because ain't nobody traveling. Ain't nobody traveling right now. All right, let me tell you a trick I've learned about this Lodge uh, cast iron skillet. You see how it's got a few rust spots on it? Any piece of iron, if you don't store it right, it's gonna get rust spots on it. When you clean this, you gotta coat it in a coating of oil. And the box that it came in, it's just a cardboard box. But what I discovered was that if I clean this thing, put a light coat of oil on it, and I store it in the original box that it came in from the manufacturer from South Pittsburgh, Tennessee, it does not rust. It just don't. Now, if I put a light coating on it, I leave it on the counter, I guess it evaporates or I don't know, it gets dried out. I, I don't know, but it'll get little rust spots. But if you're gonna store your cast iron from Lodge, you know, clean it up, put a light coat of oil on it, whatever oil you want, cooking oil, olive oil, whatever, and put it back in the cardboard box that it came from and just set it on the counter, it'll be fine, it won't rust. It's like fucking magic. It's like they put a magic box around it. Oh yeah. Now, I know it's going in that oil, but I want it to cook for a minute. So I'm gonna add a little bit of water in there just to make sure nothing burns, nothing sticks. I know oil and water don't mix. I know that's not Jack Daniels, but it's a beautiful, beautiful bottle. A friend of mine gave that to me. And I certainly appreciate him doing so. And I certainly appreciate the times I had drinking that. And so I said, you know what? This will be my water. My cooking water. 
Check that, check that. Ready? Ooh, one, two, three. Ooh, that's just hot. And boom, let that, let that cook. And what you want to do is just turn up the heat just a little bit. There you go. That's all you got to do, my friends. That's all you got to do. That's how you cook with cast iron on a barbecue grill on a balcony, watching the sunset, overlooking the beautiful Times Square, my friends. My goodness. I want to thank everybody for joining me on this cooking show. So I didn't venture out to, uh, today. Um, the Brown guy, maybe I put that footage in here. They, shout out to the Brown guy. They actually came around and we're asking people, hey, do you have a pass? If you need a pass to go to Subic, you know, you get a one-time pass, issued everybody a pass and their control number, you know, doing what they're supposed to do. Whether you agree with it or not, they're doing what they're supposed to do. I appreciated them coming to me where I didn't have to go there and try to figure out the process. So shout out to the Bronga folks here in San Isidro, San Isidro. Great job. Thank you very much for coming by. And I do have to go somewhere tomorrow. And my pass is for Subic, but I have to go to Alongapo to try to figure out if immigration is open to extend my visa where I'm not a fucking overstay during an epidemic, a pandemic, a lockdown, and a quarantine. Hashtag all that shit, you know? So tomorrow I got to run the gauntlet, try to get over to Alongapo, try to extend my visa. And I don't know if I can make it. I don't know if I'm going to find transportation. I may fucking walk from Barrio Barreto to Alongapo Immigration and back. I'm prepared to do so. I want to get this shit knocked out. And I realize there are a lot of other people around the country who are stranded, who can't get to immigration. And they've got to make some type of concession. You would think they would, but I don't want to take a chance. If I can get there tomorrow, I'm going. And at least I will go there. And if the door is fucking closed and locked up, you know, I made a valiant fucking attempt to go. And then the, the fucking burden is on them. Now, they'll probably still charge you 500 pesos a day overstay fee when they open up. But you do what you can do, right? So that's what I'm going to do tomorrow. But anyhow, shout out to my Barangay folks. They came by. So nice, folks. You know, that's the way government should be. You shouldn't have to go to them and beg for fucking permission. If they're gonna regulate something and charge you for something, they should make it very easy for you to comply with the law and pay the money, okay? If the law makes sense, I don't mind complying with it or I'm paying you a fee, a reasonable fee to facilitate things. But if I gotta go there and beg you for it and stand in line all fucking day, that's a problem. So what today I saw here was good government. Governance, government, Good government. Let's just say that. Shout out to my friends. Thank you very much. All right, let's see what we got going on, folks. Give it the one, two, three. Ooh, I can think it can't do three. I got to do one, two. Here we go. Ooh. Oh, shit. When cooking with cast iron over charcoal or fire, folks, the entire fucking pot turns into a towering inferno. When I'm cooking on the induction burner, only this gets hot this really don't get hot and this never gets hot but when I'm cooking over this uh, charcoal shit it's a two-second rule ready Ow! one two there you go let it just let it roll let it roll my coals are doing good I'll give them a little bit of fucking oxygen but they're red hot they're fucking red hot rocking on my goodness be a delicious little pork dish tonight and i think this pork dish uh with the noodles is going to turn out good but you could probably take this and put it over a bed of rice um it might even taste better with that juice if you sharpen you got to sharpen this piece of shit. but i'm looking forward to getting the real deal from gerber uh this thing's uh it's a cheap knockoff, but it works, but you got to sharpen the hell out of it. But I'm looking forward to getting the real deal, getting that fucking strong arm in over here. That's going to be my cooking knife. You know, it cleans up all right. All right, let's check it. Let's check it. 
Oh yeah, look at, oh shit, that's hot. That's fucking rocking and rolling. I put that bone over in there too to get that marrow in the cooking. And when it's done, I, I give it to that dog downstairs, but. I'm going in. I know you can't see. I gotta turn the fucking light on. I'm going in with these fucking cubes. This motherfucker here is just rocking it out. But I'm gonna tell you, when you cook with uh, cast iron over charcoal, ooh, that shit gets hot. And so does the lid. Make sure you use a pair of your wife's panties to uh, keep your hand from burning. I don't know if you can see that, folks. We're steaming out the side. Yeah. We are rocking on at a full boil on these coals i've been turning up the temp holy shit i love cooking with cast iron over coals my god look at that folks I gotta take a photo hell yeah the only thing i gotta do is drop the noodles in there and i will serve no rhyme before it's time so just a couple more minutes look at that girl dancing does your wife dance like that mm. That a beautiful girl. My goodness. All right, folks, it's time for the noodles. It's time for the noodles. I might need some more water, but I'm just gonna put them in there right now, let them soften up, see what they gonna do. And I'll check in a minute. Smoking a cigar so I can keep these fucking bugs out of here. I don't know, for some reason, Fatty Miles pissed because I'll use a pair of her panties as my fucking rag and my, you know, holder here. But hey, I don't want to burn my fucking hands, you know? That shit's fucking hot. These hardy gloves are badass, but you heat up a fucking piece of cast iron, you need a pair of your wife's panties. Extra protection. When that catches up and boils them noodles, my God, I got a feast for about six to seven Filipinos, my friends. And them coals are rocking on, loving this charcoal. Let me get the lid on this and get it back to simmer. Oh shit, it's almost already simmering. Gotta love it. All right, so we got chopping them noodles down now. It's starting to get in integrated into the mix. Welcome to the, welcome to the pool, Mr. Noodles. Yeah. So my coals are doing well. I just heated them up. The pork is definitely done. The potatoes are done. And look, I, I put that motherfucking bone in there. Cook that bone, get the flavor. But I'm gonna give it that to the dog downstairs, Norberto. I'm gonna give them bone to uh, Dachshund, wiener dog, Norberto. He'll eat that. Well, my Filipina nibble the meat off of it, then she'll give it to Norberto. Oh my good. Pork noodle soup. Holy folks, my God. Now look, don't think that we're up here being uh, exercising gluttony. The reason I make a big pot is because, well, number one, it's easier for me to cook. If I fill this thing up, I know how to cook. But we share food. We share food with our friends and our neighbors. They share food with us, so it's a food share program. So it behooves me uh, to make a full pot because we're gonna share it and also we save uh, breakfast for Forrest G. So Forrest G will have this for dinner and he'll have a good meal for breakfast. And then we also share uh, with our friends and our neighbors and they share with us. That's why I make so much food. Trust me, me and Fatima, we, there's no way we can eat all this stuff. We share it. Look at that. All right, so the noodles are in there. And she's fucking pissed because I'm using her panties. I'm like, fuck it. Who cares? Wash them. They'll be fine. It's like some kind of sacred fucking temple or something. They're just a pair of panties. There we go. And heat up the fucking temp. Turn up the temp. Turn the temp up, get this thing to boiling, because I need them noodles to boil. 
I'm looking at five minutes, folks. I'm done. And this charcoal is is a fucking champion. It's a champion fucking charcoal. I promise you, this is great charcoal. Boom, finesse. Here's just a quick shot overlooking Times Square. We got activity. People going out buying food at the market. So uh, life goes on. It's um, impacted, obviously. It's affected and impacted by this Chinese bat research virus. But we're still living here in San Isidro, my friends. And I want to thank everybody for, uh, you know, for being concerned about our well-being. We're fine. We're fine. We're going to survive. Um, my concern is for the folks out there who are less fortunate than us. I mean, they're going to survive too, but it's going to be hard. It's going to be hard shit. There's no money coming in to buy food. There's no work. There's no money. They can't buy food. There's food at the market, but you can't buy it if you got if you got no money. This ain't no fucking charity up at the market. You got money, you can buy food. So, uh, I've been thinking about it and I gotta do something. I gotta do my part. I'm out of the charity business, so nobody fucking call MBI and tell them I'm over here doing charity work. I'm out of the charity business. But I gotta do something to help somebody. And that's all you can do. You can't save the world, but you can pick a couple of people, one person, one family, and you can help them. And I saw a pregnant girl come over to the market yesterday, and she was big as Fatima, you know, young girl with her grandma. And so I think what I'm gonna do is, I don't know how many pregnant girls are in the brown guy. I don't know. I'll go to the brown guy and ask. But all the pregnant ladies, I gotta help them. Everybody else can fucking, uh, folks, I, I could go two weeks right now with no food and I'm fine. I've done it. I've done it on a fast. I'm not worried about it. But a girl carrying around the baby, she can't. And I said, all right, who the fuck can I help? I mean, the girls with the babies, they need nutrients too, but the baby's drinking them big titties. I gotta figure out how, somehow, I'm, I'm gonna help the pregnant girls around me, at least right here in my neighborhood, to make sure they're eating good through this fucking Chinese bat virus, fucking pandemic, slash community shutdown, quarantine, yada, 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 bullshit.com. So I'm gonna, I'm probably gonna adopt a couple of pregnant girls, and I'm gonna make sure they fucking eat good. I can't save the world. I learned that a long time ago. Neither can you. But... You can make a difference in a few people's lives. And when I saw that dead girl over there yesterday, she about to pop. I was like, you know what? Let, let me let me do what's within my scope right now. And what's within my scope is to basically adopt two or three, four of these pregnant girls around the brown guy and say, hey, um, you know, come over here for dinner. We'll serve you dinner. Uh, breakfast and lunch, you know, we'll give you some rice or whatever, you know, whatever you, some vegetables, rice and meat to cook. Dinner, you can have dinner with us. And just adopt them and make sure they're eating right. That's going to be my part. That's it. Oh, shit. Hit, hit. Look at that. That's going to be some kind of deliciousness. And everything is meshing well and nothing's sticking. We're still, oh, shh. You know, when you're cooking and you're drunk and you overfill the, the fucking pot, this shit happens. But uh, nothing's sticking. I just, I don't want anything to stick. I don't want anything to burn. I'm okay with a little overflow. All right, so I'm just, I'm going to give this uh, maybe five more minutes. I say five more minutes on the coals, just like it is, and then I'm gonna pop it over there on the uh, on the chopping block and just let it cool down. All right, folks, I got that off the coals over there. Put it on the fucking impervious tank of a chopping block. 
And let that shit cool down. I don't want the noodles to turn into mush. Oh, yeah. Mm hmm. That's going to be so kind of delicious. Oh, my God. I'm amazed myself. Somebody call Gordon motherfucking Ramsey and tell him to come over here and put his fucking tasters on this fucking soup. No soup for you, Gordon motherfucking Ramsey. Because you hurt people's feelings, motherfucker. You don't get none of this motherfucking soup. You don't get rewarded for being an asshole to people, man. No soup for you. Folks, that's what it looks like plated. My goodness, it looks delicious. Um, and this over here looks delicious too. My beautiful wife right here, she's looking thick and delicious. But right now we're trying to talk about this. Uh, we're trying to talk about, ooh, ooh. Baby, you distracted me from my filming, my God. You know why? Because I like big butts and I cannot lie. You other brothers can't deny. Mmm, she's thick in all the right places, folks. Fat, P-H-A-T, pretty, hot, and tempting. Baby, how's my food? Just be honest. No. Good, no good, or delicious? Delicious. Are you sure? Take one more bite, be sure. Get a, get a bite of that pork. <laughs> Oh, it's hot. Okay, all right. Let me go smoke my cigar, then I come back and check with you, okay? Baby, how'd you get so thick? Mmm, baby, you, you thick like a bowl of oatmeal.